Hello guys. So today in this particular video, I want to talk about something called as elastic net regression. So instead of thinking of this as another linear regression problem, uh, I would like to more associate it with the method of regularization. Okay. So why? I'll tell you in a while. Okay. So let's get started. So as you all know, in linear regression, uh, we'll have a feature and we have the target variable. So in this case, I'm just considering univariate. Okay. So, just to plot it in a good way. So, we are trying to find this particular best fit line. Okay. And what's the hypothesis that we have? In general, this is our hypothesis if we have n number of features. Okay. And the associated cost function which we will use to apply gradient descent in order to minimize this. This is the cost function. This is also called as mean squared error. MSC. Right. So, I have written it here. It is given by 1 by 2 m summation over 1 to m, sum of the differences between actual and predicted values. That is the square difference. So, this m here is number of training records or in general you can consider it as number of records in the given data set. Okay? So, this is the general linear regression without any regularization concept. Right? So, while we are dealing with regularization, we have learnt about ridge and lasso regression, right? So, ridge regression, the cost function changes slightly. So, how it changes? We will add a new regularization term here, which is given by lambda by 2m, summation from j is equal to 1 to n. So, n is the number of features. Number of features, right? And summation over 1 to n, square squared values of the parameters, the learnable parameters. Here, thetas are our learnable parameters, correct? In gradient descent, we will update these values to get the minimum cost function. So, this is how we use regularization when we are dealing with ridge regression. So, we take the squared norm. This is also called as L2 norm. Okay? And when it comes to lasso regression, instead of taking the squared L2 norm, we will just consider L1 norm. So, there is no much difference with the formula. So, there is no square over this particular theta parameters. So, rest all thing remains the same when it comes to cost function, right? But what is the difference between ridge and lasso regression? So, when we increase this lambda, lambda value, theta values becomes small. They, they will become small but never become zero, right? So, I will just write that as well. They will never become zero. In which case, in case of ridge regression. So, thetas will never become 0, no matter how large lambda is increased. Okay? But when it comes to lasso regression, if lambda value is increased to a high value, theta values will turn 0. Right? So, effectively what we would do, what we are doing in case of lasso regression, if we are increasing the lambda value, we are, some of the theta values would be equating to the value 0. So, what happens with this? So, if you just look at this particular hypothesis or the predict, uh, the linear regression hypothesis, if theta 1 is set to 0, we are turning off the feature x1. Right? Similarly, if we are setting theta 2 to 0, we are turning off the feature x2. Right? So, similarly, if we are turn, uh, setting the theta n to 0, we are turning off this feature xn. So, this is how lasso regression works. So, how do we decide when to apply ridge regression and when do we apply lasso regression? So, ridge regression is applied when we know that all the, all the features that are in the data set are important. We know that none of the features are unwanted or there are there is no multicollinearity or anything of such sort. Okay? So, in that case, we will make use of ridge regression. When do we make use of lasso regression? If in a data set, uh, if we have the features which are unwanted. Okay? So, let us say we have large data set with hundreds or thousands of features. In that case, it is very difficult to identify which features are important and which features are not important. So, in that case, in order to turn out the features, in order to do away with the features, automatically we will make use of lasso regression. Okay? Hope this point is clear. Right? So, when you have got the background of these things, I will come to elastic net regression. So, what elastic net regression does? 
it actually combines both lasso and ridge regression together into a one equation so here the hypothesis of linear regression remains same hypothesis that is h theta of x remains same okay so in elastic net only the cost function changes okay so as you can see here i have written it so this particular thing it's a simple msc this particular term here is of ridge regression correct and this particular term here is of lasso regression so note this lambda 1 and lambda 2 both are different so lambda 1 and lambda 2 are different they are not one and the same okay so this is what elastic net actually looks like this is how it looks like so what do we achieve by combining this elastic net by combining both lasso and ridge regression what do we achieve in elastic regression so we have a capability in order to control the trade off between how much ridge we want to have and how much lasso we want to have in one algorithm itself so instead of applying two different algorithms ridge and lasso separately with the elastic net regression we have the capability to control the trade off between ridge regression and lasso regression how so if you go to scikit learn uh, implementation of uh, elastic net you will find two hyperparameters basically which are very important which we have to tune so first one is this lambda so this is actually represented as alpha in scikit learn so i'll just write alpha on top of lambda so alpha is equal to a plus b and l1 ratio is given by a by a plus b and what is this a and what is this b so a is the weight associated with ridge regression right so a is the weight associated with ridge regression and b is the weight associated with lasso regression okay so by manipulating the values of this l1 ratio okay how we will how it will impact how much ridge we have to use and how much lasso we have to use we will see that now okay so let's say if we are uh, by default this alpha right so sorry for that let me write it in a nice way so this alpha by default it will have the value 1 and l1 ratio value will be set to 0 0.5 so when i say alpha is 1 and l1 ratio is set to 0 0.5 so this is what the values for a and b will be okay so if you just equate 0 0.5 for both a and b in these two equations you will get alpha is equal to 1 and l1 ratio is equal to 0.5 right you just substitute 0 0.5 in these equations for a and b okay so now if i say l1 ratio is equal to 0.8 so if i set l1 ratio to 0.8 in my scikit learn implementation what i'm trying to say is i am trying to say i'm actually asking elastic net regression to make use ridge regression 80% and remaining 20% of the weight should be given to lasso. 80% of the weight to be given to ridge regression and 20% weight will be assigned to lasso regression. So, how this actually works? So, it's a small mathematical detail. I will quickly go through it. Okay. So, you know that uh, I have written lambda here. Please bear with me. So, it can be treated as alpha. Okay. So, wherever there is lambda, or let me quickly turn everything to alpha here. So it's a simple thing okay so okay so alpha is a plus b l1 is equal to a by a plus b right now look at it carefully a plus b is alpha right so i'll just replace a plus b here with alpha so my l1 can be written as a by alpha okay and similarly a will a can be written as l1 into alpha correct and b can be obtained using alpha minus a b can be obtained using alpha minus a right so we have three unknowns right so l1 a b so if we know any two values l1 and a we can derive the value for b using this particular formula right so now let us understand what do i mean by setting l1 ratio to 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 okay so here i have taken the example of 0 0.9 so let's go with it so let's say we are keeping alpha value is equal to 1 let's keep this as constant value 
and I am specifying L1 is equal to 0.9 in my SKLearn library for elastic net. Okay. So, what this does? So, this implies that A is equal to 0.9. Why A is equal to 0.9? Because I can, if I look at this L1 equation, which is A by alpha, A is, L1, we know that L1 is setting to 0.9, right? And alpha is 1. So, what will be A? A will be L1 into alpha, correct? So, here I have this. So, L1 is 0 0.9, alpha is 1. So, A will be 0 0.9. And what is A? A is the weight associated with ridge regression. So, 90% weight is assigned to ridge regression and remaining B. B, how, how we can calculate B? B is equal to alpha is 1, 1 minus 0 0.9. So, remaining 10% of weight is assigned for lasso regression, okay? So, this is how we will control the trade-off between how much lasso and rigid regression to be applied in SKLearn when it comes to elastic net regression. Okay. So, this is about elastic net regression and one question is when to choose elastic net regression. So, when we have large data set and more features. So, let us say we are dealing with 100 or more, more than 100 features. Okay. So, in that case, we will it is better to choose elastic net regression algorithm because it tends to do better than other linear regression algorithms. Okay? This is one condition and if we have multicollinearity in the data set, so when I say multicollinearity, so if the independent, if the features the, or the input variables x1, x2, x3, so on and so forth up to xn, so if any of these features are dependent on one another, so let us say if x1 is dependent on x2 and x4 is dependent on x1, Something like that. So, then we say that we have multicollinearity. Correct? So, in, case, in such cases, we will make use of elastic net algorithm. Okay? So, hope you found this video useful and how this uh, regularization term actually helps in avoiding overfitting and how this turns to zero in case of lasso regression. You can refer to my video wherein I have explained both lasso and ridge regression in detail. Uh, I will provide that link in the description of this particular video. Okay. So, hope you like the content and understood what elastic net regression is and when to use elastic net regression. Okay. So, that's it for this video. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Thanks one and all. Bye bye.